Hi everyone, today I've got the wonderful, wonderful Natalie Brasington from the Wisdom Tree Centre, Tree Centre with me. Um, Natalie, could you please introduce yourself and tell us how you were drawn to Avalon? Hello, um, I'm Natalie and uh, I'm a High Priestess um, and guide of the Twelfth Ray Mystery School um, and I own the Wisdom Tree Centre. Uh, this happened really divinely. Um, just by walking down the gauntlet, I said to my friend, wouldn't it be cool to have temple space here? Uh, thinking that it would be at least 12 months ahead. And it just so happened that someone pulled out of this centre. Um, within two days, it was 24 hours, make a decision. So if that isn't the hierarchy or the God and Goddess deciding that this is where I'm meant to be, I don't know what is. So I literally had to have utmost trust and faith in the goddess that this was where they wanted me to be and to serve and reach the, um, the people that I was contracted to serve. I, I have two hats. I uh, have a mainstream hat where I have a degree in complementary health therapies. So I offer reflexology, massage. I'm a Reiki master teacher, so I offer Reiki um, and often integrate that as well as my sound therapy again with the client's um, permission. I love nothing more than when they say just just flow with what you feel and, and just go with in your um, intention. So when I have free flow I can involve this wand which I've made myself. Um, it, was, it was handcrafted from an ash tree uh, from where I used to live. It was gifted from the ash tree and I worked it and I made this one. So when someone gives me free reign to treat them in any way that they fi I feel is a benefit to them, in invariably this one will also be involved. Um, and I'm also doing some more wand making so eventually there'll be wands for sale as well. Um, but that and the and the sound therapy and the Reiki is all pretty much part of who I am. So I bring that into my mainstream. And also I have last stone, which is hot and chilled stones. Um, so they're my mainstream, but the, who I really am is when I'm flowing my metaphysical energies. Um, and we all know, don't we, well, how beautiful it is when we flow the goddess energy through us and be all that we are and more. The beautiful DNA activation. The DNA activation is activating who you are, your blueprint, what you came to do. And many of us, when we come in the physical vessel, we forget. Um, uh, especially my age, there was, you know, I'm a 1970s babe, so. Um, a lot of our parents weren't so open as the parents that are coming in today um, and also educational conditioning so these can switch your codons off um, and you're not utilizing your full potential so the DNA activation activates you what you chose to do so when you're a spirit whether you believe it or not you do actually choose the good the bad and the ugly and the great so um, by, by having your DNA activated, it activates unrealized talents and abilities. It allows you to access more areas of your brain. So if you're into doing courses and learning, um, it enables you to do that a, a, a much easier flow. Uh, in the same stance, it helps with your health, your immunity, your energy levels. Um, and, and predominantly, it allows you to integrate all that you are. So it is, it is something that, for some, it can be really powerful, like it was for me. I mean, I was obviously way off beat, so I did a full U-turn. So before all of this, before becoming a therapist, a healer, a high priestess, and the divine energy of the goddess, it was always part of me. And I look back and there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of signs like, as a child, I communicated with trees, stones, animals, and and woodland. It was just much easier than, than humans. So there's that elements of me that I can look back and see was always part of me, but I wasn't on my proper path. Um, I, yeah, I don't regret anything that I've been through because it's 
mm. made me who I am today. It's molded me into who I am today so I can empathise with others. Yes. I also do the Isis healing. So there's a lot of Isis energy, goddess energy in here. Um, and that literally is um, uh, the removal of the old emotional body and the bringing in of a new rebirth of the emotions. Um, and it is phenomenally powerful. Um, and I love, Isis has just got a really strong um, loving energy. She just imbues love and rebirth and new beginnings. Um, but she is also very specific. When I did the healing not that long ago, um, I, I do an uh, altar, especially for her, on this desk. And I was putting it in place, and she, and she would literally, I could hear her telling to me, like, nope, that's slightly out of place, you want to put that there. And, and it, was, it had to be specific until she was happy, and then I could flow with the process of the um, ISIS healing. And even the, the, the lady re receiving it was just like, wow. She could see, she could even feel the energy of Isis being that specific. So it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful um, honour again. And I love, so I work with many goddesses, but Isis is very strong in here. And you actually feel the headrest coming down your head. It is so cool. And the, another lady that um, I did it for many years ago, she goes on about it loads because she actually felt like the chin coming out. And she actually Googled it and she didn't realise that the chin could also be for the divine feminine as well as the masculine, but in the, in the Egyptian girls obviously they did. Um, so that was quite profound for her, but it's different for everybody, but yeah. So, yeah, so Avalon has always drawn me way before I got my, sis my um, centre. This is my bolt hole. This is my first love. It's something about Avalon that just pulls you in, but it also nurtures you and, and holds you. And, you know, there's so much, you know, when I used to say when I first came to Glastonbury, I'd say to people in Devon, oh, I've been to Glastonbury, oh, have you been to the festival? And everyone would think it was that darn music pop uh, festival. And I was just like, no, like, why would I? No disrespect if you go. Um, but basically for me, Glastonbury is so much more than that. It's like the divine feminine, divine masculine of the wells, you know, with the spring and the white spring and the chalice well. It's the going to the tour, feeling the, you know, the energy of the ley lines just come up through your feet and up through your body. And it's just almost like a, a recharge. And I know your heart is beating like the clappers as you're walking up the, the, the tour. But, you know, the whole energy experience that Glastonbury has to offer you, you know, the abbey, it's like walking into a new portal. You just get have this serene sense of, <sighs> you know, and yet there's 36, 37 acres of land in the Abbey. You know, so it's, it's just beautiful. But at the same time, there is, I think Glastonbury is the only high street that is still flourishing in its uniqueness because of what Glastonbury has to offer. But the Divine Feminine is huge. You know, we've got um, Magdalene energies as well. You know, um, I also follow the Wiccan Wheel of the Year. There's so much to the, the goddess flow, but what's so important at the moment is people are waking up. You know, because the Divine Feminine has been in us all for so long. I mean, it's who we are. She, she, she manifests in, in every human vessel, you know. Um, and it was always there, it was just, Dump and down, whereas now people are able to go, you know what, this is who I am, you know. And what I really love about it is more and more people are becoming okay with how their vessel looks like now. So now there's not, you know, when I was growing up, it was always about, you know, being skinny, malinky, you know, um, and now it's, it's not. Now people are more um, inclined to accept their curves and and voluptuous body and actually go you know what this is my divine temple you know this is my divine temple holding my amazing soul and spirit and actually it's okay so it doesn't matter if you're short tall fat thin you know huge boobs flat eggs what it's pure acceptance and that's what i love about glassman as well 
absolute pure acceptance of all you know that and and that's so important in this every day is that everyone's just you know you cannot be genuine kindness and acceptance you know you just don't know what's going on in other people's worlds but you know if you just give them a smile or a little bit of kindness that can make an absolute difference in their everyday and and you know with us allowing the divine feminine essence to come into actual being um, that naturally is it, it flows with grace and love and humility and that is what the world needs right now it needs more of us to embrace who we are and not be so sensitive about oh what's everybody gonna think oh you know it doesn't matter what matters is you being true to you walking in your path in your integrity and you know you can't you can't beat that you know and and, and if you speak your truth lovingly how someone else takes that it's not your responsibility but your responsibility is to yourself and there's no greater love than than just being a genuine and open we're always learning from from other people you know you can never know enough you know that you know yeah okay you could be really good at what you do but I do I think that the more and more divine feminine souls come together and share of their experience and their knowledge um, I think the more we can support each other but also the more we learn like you l I learn every day every day but at the same time I love nothing more than teaching and empowering someone else on their to start their journey you know because everyone has to start at some stage and it's, it's never too late to learn you know, it's, it's when it's right for that person at the time, and when a student is ready, a teacher shall appear. What and is goddess or divine feminine? Um, what do you think of? What does it mean to you when you hear those words? Uh, I when I hear those words, I feel sacred flow. I feel grace. I feel warmth and um, that sense of being nurtured and held um, there's that that kind of flow of wisdom and understanding and acceptance and love love predominantly you know but then there are some goddesses that are excuse the phrase, kick your backside, you know, so it's not all, it's not all, um, fluffy bunnies, you know, like, there's a lovely side of the goddess that is about creating, creation and, and, and nurturing you and loving you and giving you the encouragement and the confidence and the strength to go, yes, this is me. But the other side of the coin, if you're procrastinating way too long, they will kick your butt. You know, it's, it, you know the, there's another essence to them that goes, no, it's time. Get out there and get to be seen. And that is pretty much what happened with me. Five weeks, I was stubborn. Five weeks, I kept hearing, it's time, it's time. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, it's time. And then this happened in a matter of days. It was insane. I love the Wiccan Wheel of the Year because... At each Sabbath and um, or Esbat, whichever you know, both, I honour them. I honour the goddess of that season. I I, I honour the sun god. I honour the oak god. I so it is a god and goddess for me because I like the I like the balance of divine masculine, and divine feminine, and I think they're as important as each other. You know, but um, if I could put into words how I'm feeling, it'd be so much easier. But it just makes me go, <sighs> you know, that sense of peace. Thank you so much for this amazing interview, Nat. I've loved listening to you speak, and on behalf of everyone that watches it, thank you so much. Thank you, and I can't wait to meet the beautiful souls that are going to come through and visit me. You're always, always a free hug for all. Yay, thank you. Thank you.